If you think that your cell phone is just a paperweight, if it doesn't have connectivity to the cellular network, you're only partially right. Today, we're gonna to talk about different emergency communication methods which you can utilize without a license in addition to your cell phone. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna reveal a couple of different things you might not already know about your cell phone and how it can be used in an emergency situation without cellular connectivity. So we'll be breaking down the pros, the cons, the costs, and some of the operating principles of a couple of different key pieces of technology that you can use to communicate in an emergency. But before we talk about any of that, please like and subscribe really quick. It helps us uh, grow the channel, it pushes us in the algorithm, and it ensures that we're gonna be able to do more of this in the future. So if you like our content even a little bit, please like and subscribe. Also, throughout the course of this video, if you want to see any other types of explanations or content related to emergency preparedness or communications, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to get that video in the rotation soon. So the first piece of equipment I wanna talk about today that does not require a license and can be a lifesaver in an emergency situation is a satellite messenger. So there's a bunch of different brands that we could talk about. I have experience with two, uh, Garmin, InReach, and Spot. I have the Spot X and the Gen 4 as well. So what is a satellite messenger? How can it help you and what does it do and how does it work? There are a couple different types, but the main type that you'll see is something you connect your phone to using some specific app that allows you to use satellites above you to communicate anywhere in the world using your phone, but without cellular connectivity. Now there are a couple different satellite constellations that support this type of messaging. One is the uh, Iridium satellite constellation and the other is the Global Star satellite constellation. The basic vibe and difference between the two is that Iridium is top tier, they've got global coverage, they're more reliable for critical situations, and then Global Star is a little more regional and a little more affordable. You will pay a premium for using the Iridium constellation. So the Garmin devices, like the Garmin in reach use iridium there are also iridium phones that you can buy which are not really in the scope of this video but you should know that they exist satellite phones that also use the iridium constellation i've spent hundreds of hours using the iridium constellation for data and for voice calls and it's typically pretty robust and reliable global star on the other hand operates in a store and forward type of operational capacity. So if you send a message using your Global Star activated device uh, and the message goes up to the satellite, the satellite might hold that message until it passes over a ground station where it can inject the message into the network. And Iridium, on the other hand, tends to immediately send the message up to the satellite and then can send it over to another satellite to hit whatever ground station it needs to hit. Whether you're going on a backpacking trip and you need a reliable backup communication source, or if you think that something could take out the cell towers in your area like a hurricane or floods, then having a communication method that is not reliant on cell networks is prudent. So we'll do a rapid fire pros list for these devices. They tend to be pretty robust. They also tend to have a dedicated SOS function. So if you don't necessarily want to use the device for direct messaging and you just want it for purely emergency situations, you can use it like a personal locator beacon, a PLB, where you can press the SOS button and then that sends a message up that says, hey, come get me, I'm in trouble. Some pre-canned message. Another thing is that they tend to have really, really good battery life. I'm talking up to a month. They sip electricity, they don't chug it. Lastly, they have global or near global coverage. So no matter where you're at, as long as you can see the sky, you're probably good. This might not work in a cave, but anywhere else, you're probably gonna get connectivity. Now let's talk a little bit about the cons. The biggest con that I've seen is that not only do you have to purchase the device, but then you also have to pay a subscription fee every month. This is somewhat mitigated by companies that allow you to say buy a month whenever you need it and deactivate it as soon as you don't. But those plans tend to be a little more expensive. Sometimes they'll call them either the flexible or flex plan, something like that. That flexibility usually comes at a premium. Uh, to cover some rough price points so you have a general idea of what these things are gonna cost. 
If you buy Spot Gen 4 or Spot X, it's gonna run you anywhere from $100 to $150 for the device. And that's just from what I could find on Amazon today. And then for the Garmin in-reach devices, it'll vary but it's anywhere from $300 up to, I think, $500. I should note that the $500 Garmin inReach Plus allows you to send pictures and voice memos, so there is an extra capability there. But all the other devices are going to be limited to text. So some of the subscription fees for the Garmin inReach, it was anywhere from, I think, 15 bucks up to $55 is what I saw. And then for the Spot Gen 4 and X, the plan was 15 bucks a month for unlimited use. But again, I have to specify that that unlimited use is for text messages only. You don't send pictures and you don't send voice memos with these Spot devices. So we've talked about our satellite messengers and we talked about the Iridium satellite constellation. We've talked about the Global Star satellite constellation and we talked a little bit about the price points and capabilities that you can see with these devices. Now let's move on to a piece of kit that has a little bit more capability, but some noted cons. But before we talk about that, I will give you a quick message about our sponsor, which is me. I'm the sponsor. I run a company called Mad Gear, and we sell contingency planners, and we have an app called Ready Plan. The contingency planner in the app give you the tools that you need to come up with your first emergency plan. These tools guide you through the process of making a plan that is suitable for not just you, but your entire family. It covers communications, it covers your evacuations, and the planning process of figuring out what exactly it is you need to do in a specific emergency. If you become a member on our app or if you purchase our planner, you're directly supporting us. So this high-tech piece of gear I was talking about is the Starlink terminal. Taking a Starlink Mini with you is certainly not out of the question. I personally have a Starlink Mini Go Bag. It has a battery, has a Starlink terminal, and it's ready to go with all my other communications equipment. While satellite messengers cover messaging and essential emergency communications, the Starlink is going to turn you into a command post, giving you information superiority. With a Starlink, you're not just sending text messages, you are collecting information that could be incredibly useful for your family or your group or for anybody else, say in your neighborhood, if you've lost power and you have no idea what's going on. Other devices can connect to the Starlink Mini. So if you've got phones and computers, I I've done this myself where I set up the Starlink and everybody around will use it to connect their phones or their laptops to get internet. So we'll talk a little bit about the specs because I know some people are probably curious. You can get about 200 megabytes per second, anywhere from 30 to 45 millisecond ping, and the power draw tends to be around 25 to 35 watts. I think that last statement is probably going to immediately draw attention for some of you to the biggest con of the Starlink Mini. It is hungry for power. So one of my battery packs that I have, this is the Goal Zero Sherpa 100 PD. It's capable of running the Starlink Mini for anywhere from two to three hours on average. At first it might sound like a lot, but compared to the satellite messengers, it's really not that much. Using the Starlink Mini isn't something that you could say have on at all times just sitting there, unless of course you have some sort of unlimited power supply. If you have to heavily consider power management, there are other options. For example, the Starbat Mini, which contains a 24 hour battery for the Starlink Mini, is a really good option. I actually have one and I've tested it. It works phenomenally. So if you need 24 hours of battery for a Starlink Mini, that's one way to go. But they're not the cheapest. When you buy one of these devices, it's gonna start anywhere around 400 on sale up to 600 without a sale. Your monthly cost is going to be anywhere from $50 a month and up. If you cancel your $50 a month plan, then you will subsequently be presented with an option to downgrade to a $10 per month plan for 10 gigabytes. And that's personally what I do. One tactic that you could employ is leaving the Starlink off and using either your cell phone or your Garmin in reach as your primary way of communicating if you're alerted to something that would require more data or specifically require internet connectivity. At that point, you could power on your Starlink Mini just long enough to get what you need and then power it off. I'll go ahead and give a quick mention to the different satellite constellation the Starlink uses. Simply the Starlink constellation, path diversity, then having different satellite constellations for your communications is something you should consider. 
So Starlink is its own constellation with its own satellites. And then Iridium and Global Star are their own constellation with their own satellites. Having access to different constellations could help if the ground stations for one of these go down for some reason, or if a cyber attack takes out one or another. There are always things that can happen that can take down specific communication pathways. So having backups is super important. We won't dive into this too much here, but the concept is really pace planning. So PACE is an acronym, which stands for Primary, Alternate, Contingency, Emergency. And that just means you can organize different levels of communications for different situations. Now, let's talk about your phone. For some reason, a lot of people assume that their phones are basically going to turn into a useless brick as soon as an emergency occurs. And that's just simply not the case. Now, people love to talk about EMPs and how, oh, when the EMP comes, everything's gonna be down. And I mean, somewhat, yes. The odds of an EMP being the thing that you're gonna face, incredibly slim. So just because there is one type of extremely horrible emergency that could take out your cell phone, that doesn't mean you shouldn't prepare accordingly because hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or any other kind of localized disaster are not necessarily going to render your phone completely useless. So with that being said, the first thing that your phone can do without traditional 4G or 5G connectivity is make emergency phone calls. You can actually use 2G or 3G networks for any carrier, it doesn't have to be your own carrier, to make emergency calls. It might appear like your phone has zero bars of connectivity, but that might just be for your primary carrier. So you should always, if you're in an emergency situation, try to make the call because oftentimes it might seem like you couldn't get a 911 call through, but you really could. It's also important to consider that 2G and 3G inherently have a longer distance of connectivity. So you can connect to a 2G or 3G network further out from a tower than you could with 4G or 5G. The next thing I wanna talk about is offline navigation. GPS does not require cellular connectivity or Wi-Fi to use. Now, sometimes cellular connectivity can give you great greater precision, but you don't have to have it. GPS basically works off of, to put it simplistically, timing signals that it's receiving from GPS satellites. If it's able to receive these signals from four or more satellites, then you can get a pretty accurate fix for your location. You can download maps for your area or really any area, and as long as you have space to save them on your phone, you can still get navigation information without Wi-Fi. So what I would suggest you would do for an emergency situation is download the local map for your area or any other emergency locations or relocation sites that you think you might visit and ensure that you have a complete map from start to finish for all of your different evacuation points. This means that if you lose cellular connectivity, you are still going to be able to navigate. Now you won't get real-time traffic information or hazards on the road, but you will at least get some sort of information on how to navigate. The next one I wanna talk about is pretty new and it's really exciting in my opinion. So if you have a newer phone, then you might have seen satellite messaging capabilities. Phone manufacturers have teamed up with different satellite constellation owners and figured out a way to get your phone to talk to satellites just the same way that satellite messengers do. This type of added capability could really take your phone from being somewhat resilient to having a, a pace plan packed inside of it. You could have connection to either the cellular network, your Starlink mini terminal, or you could even connect directly to a satellite constellation. Another new thing that I've been seeing lately are these apps that allow for mesh networking using Bluetooth on your phone. So I know I talk about Mesh-tastic in some of my other videos. Apps like Briar or BitChat are allowing users to just directly use their phone without even having to use an external device. Now I know the capabilities are not exactly that robust, Bluetooth doesn't really go that far. Um, LoRa, which MeshTastic uses, is specifically designed for long range communications. So there are some issues, but it is one more way that you could use your phone to communicate without cellular service. If all else fails and you really need to get an emergency message out, you can use the flashlight on your phone to signal SOS, or you could simply use the flashlight to get somebody's attention. The last way that I wanna talk about using your phone in an emergency situation is for offline data storage. 
Whether you're storing first aid manuals or pictures of your IDs or using your Ready Plan app to save all of your emergency plans offline, your phone has a ton of capability for storing important information. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you more important homework steps for the things that you can do right now that aren't gonna cost you a bunch of money to take action on some of this advice. One thing that ties all of these together is that they're pretty much useless without electricity. Any PACE plan is going to really need a power management plan. I know I mentioned my battery pack earlier, the Goal Zero uh, Sherpa 100 PD. You're going to have to figure out ways to manage your power. So that's not what this video is about. We can talk about power management in a separate video, but whether it's generators or solar panels or connecting to power in a car or having a bunch of battery packs, you're gonna need to figure out ways to get extra power. Things you can do right now to be more prepared, and I mean as soon as this video is over, Get out your phone, go to either Google or Apple Maps, and download the offline maps for your area. This could really save you in a pickle. Also, go download some manuals. Find first aid manuals. Download stuff that could be important during an emergency. In addition to that, take pictures of your IDs, take pictures of your passports, titles, anything important that could really mess you up if you didn't have it. Also, for insurance purposes, it's a good idea to have a picture of your valuables and a list of all of your different valuables. That's kind of a different conversation, but it's along the same vein. And in an emergency, when you need to just get out of your house or evacuate, most of the time you're not thinking about, oh, I need to take pictures of all my valuables. So it's something that's important to do beforehand. And you can store that on your phone. All right, please like and subscribe if you didn't already. Thanks for watching. We've covered satellite messengers. We've co covered Starlink and different ways that you can use your phone, all unlicensed ways for uh, using emergency communications. If you have anything that you want to see in the future, please comment below and let me know. Thanks.